book this thing in and show us this time of day. It's like, yeah, this thing that doesn't do very well. Yeah, it's still dark. All right, legends, we're rolling out. We gotta go. And this is not a low light some food. camera. We're rolling out of the yard. You can see Paul's got his lights on. It's 627. Usually about a month or so ago, it would be light already. Now it's getting light around 645 in the morning. It's almost 630. Light is not out yet. The sun is just creeping out from the east there behind me. I love getting up at this time of day to bring in the, the daylight. On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton, rode into the woodlands. We picked up a uh, Team RR on Research Forest, headed down Fish Creek Boulevard into Honia. Once we got into Honia, there was a lot of action, played around a bit. We went ahead and left them on 2854, and we rode through the back way. We found a new route to get out to 1097. And that part was off camera. Then we rode into Richards, Texas on Highway 149. After we stopped at the store in Richards, we turned on the camera. We came back down on 1486 all the way into Dakas on film. And after that, we turned off the filming and went into on Mount Mariah Road, past Dobbin to Jackson Road, back into Montgomery once we pass Karen and we took Montgomery on 1488 East into the woodlands. It was a lovely day. We got two tropical storms in the Gulf and they changed our weather system to where the wind was blowing out of the northwest. So it was overcast and very mild, comfortable temperatures. It's a beautiful day for a bike ride. Well legend, we just hit Richard's Forest. 7 Eleven. And these boys are right behind us. We had to give it a stick. Yep. The timing was impeccable. Yeah, as soon as we hit Research Forest, we went through the light that were right there. Thanks. We had to really ride hard, but we were running behind the schedule. <laughs> we should have left at 6.15. We left about six, close to 6.30. That was good, man. We're that talking about good. the warm-up. <laughs> and how intense it was. Clean up the pipes. That's what Paul says, clean up the pipes. Right behind us, we're just kind of rolling and waiting till they come by. Uh. <laughs> we're talking about the bike I'm riding. I hadn't taken it out in a while. This is where they come by. That's Dan, the man on the left, in the chartreuse. Socks and shoes. That's Mark. And this is Bob. He's always got something smart to say. He tells Paul to take it easy on him. Bob likes to trash talk and he doesn't have the legs to back it up. <laughs> so I just usually just smile. This is Lulo, the guy who had the flat last week. He had posted that uh Yeah, this is Abby. He says that he missed me on Friday and we're going to go uh What's the place? Uh, Huntsville. And this is what I talked about in the, the video I made. And I told him I don't ride on Fridays. If I do ride on Fridays, not to Huntsville, Texas. I may just spin around the area by myself or with my wife or something easy in preparation for the weekend. Look. So uh, Lulo had posted on the board that, hey, I'm coming out and this time I'm bringing new tires. So I made a mental note that where appropriate, I was going to let him know it's not 
the fact that the tires were old. It's the fact that the rock cut the tire. And you know, a new tire can get cut too. And so it worked out, you'll hear in a little bit, he brings up the subject again. And I go ahead and just let him know that, you know, I gave him some tips. Because I have a feeling he was not aware of it. So the, the opportunity presented itself and so I chose to take advantage of just giving him some information that he might find useful. Yeah. I saw the segment where his wife was also commenting and yeah. Yeah. Kathy was Yeah. Yeah. You can tell. Yeah. You can tell. Yes. So we're talking about yeah. some of the, the old films I was watching with Greg LeMond. Yeah, I enjoyed that scene. And he saw, Paul said he's, yeah. he, he yeah. saw Kathy LeMond on one film as well. You know, she was his big, she's his biggest ambassador. So that's what we're chatting about. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Very nice show. Yeah. 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 Yeah
or discuss what we're doing. I mean, we know we're going to do at least six hours. But we had not discussed the route or anything. Our primary mode is to ride with these guys into Pontiac, Montgomery, as far as they're going. And then if they're not going further, we head out. So this is when we start making sure we're loading up with water, eating for the next hour to get ready for whatever comes so that in the second and third hour we're not low on energy. So we turn left here, Fish Creek is up ahead. So I'm behind Paul at this point. Lewis on the right, Abby's on the left. So we hit Fish Creek here, and uh, in a little bit, Tim says to me, I don't think the camera picked it up, because I'm behind Paul. Tim is one of the riders who hadn't been on a group ride in a while, and I guess his fitness is behind. So he said, let's see if these guys are going to hold a reasonable pace. And then he mentioned to somebody, well, Elder usually holds a reasonable pace. So I told him, I said, don't fall for that. Anything goes. Uh, Paul just told Mark that his bike is quiet. Because Mark had a noise coming from his bike two weeks ago, and he got that sorted. He said it was a wheel bearing that was making the noise. Yeah, I'm behind Paul. This is what I'm telling Tim. I said, uh, no, I don't always ride at a reasonable pace. <laughs> so in a little bit, I will ride up and take the camera from Paul so I can get everybody on film because a lot of these guys don't come to the front. So they don't really get on film. So I just wanted to take a shot of the group before we really got going. So that's Tim on the left there. How you doing, buddy? That's Bob that Paul is next to. And he told him he doesn't usually see him on Saturday. I never see you Saturday. Oh, I've been kind of social distance riding. Oh, okay. Social distance riding. <laughs> social distance riding. <laughs> the bicycle has one seat, so that's okay. easy to do. <laughs> I saw you on a Sunday ride or a Saturday. You see how we're using about half of the lane? Wow, that's good. I check for traffic and I ride up the park. And I ask the borrow the camera. So I roll backwards. It's on a soft pedal so I can film everybody. That's Tim. I didn't get this guy's name, that's Tim's buddy. I didn't get his name either. He's written with us a few. This is the guy I was talking all about. Right. It was all over his bike. He ends up bumping me. You You'll see later. Hey. <laughs> That's Bart and uh, Al. <laughs> Bart and Abby. I thought they're looking sharp. So I ride back up to Paul to give him the camera. There you go, my brother. I wanted to get the whole team. All right. Thank you. I want to get I Team R R before they really start riding. Yeah, Paul was saying that he got some good shots with a rear view from the camera. I told him I saw. This is a good way for your group to use the lane. Well, you see, uh, two people on the shoulder and two people in the lane. You end up using it by half. So if you're doing a double pace line, when it's time to peel off, it can open up like a, a flower or a banana on both sides. Bob takes off, and in a little bit, I tell Mark, I said, I guess you guys are going too slow for Bob. Yeah, he told Paul that he's riding 150 miles a week. Uh, a lot of people like to tell people that. I don't think it's uh, necessary unless it comes up in a topic or whatever because what matters is what you do with those 150 miles. 
just focus on finding out how many hours you can devote to your hobby that won't disrupt your life and make the most of it. Be efficient. That's why we don't wait around for these guys. We've got a certain number of hours on Saturday for cycling and we don't want to spend it standing around. We want to ride. And base your volume on the level you're at and the event you're training for. So you can avoid what we call garbage miles. So we, we basically are starting the ride now. I had mentioned the mark out of the camera audio that the camera didn't pick it up. That basically I think you guys are going too slow for Bob. That's why he took off. In a joking manner. So when you do stuff like that, make sure you got plenty left. You're going to see later when it gets really hot and heavy. You got to be able to sustain what you start. I look for traffic. The lane's clear. It's, it's going to become two lanes, so then I move over early. Gives me visibility, and it keeps me on the clean part of the road. I want my Victoria Evo tires. They're not the toughest tire out there. But man, they ride well. So I'm very cognizant of where I'm placed on the road. You can see Bob's bouncing. He needs a fit. The saddle's a little high. It's out of position. As long as you don't settle that, the more you ride, the more uncomfortable you will get. Chafing, saddle sores, that's, that's what causes that. All that excessive movement. So the pace is a bit higher than when we're warming up. Dan sitting at the front taking his pole. I slip in in front of Paul here. I think there's a light up there with slowing down for something, some soft pet. No, there's no light, we're not there yet. The pace just reduced, I guess. We had such a good warm-up that throughout all of this, we were very well warmed up to handle it. I don't, I'm not even aware that my brakes are rubbing. I just know that I'm working harder than what I should be. It just feels hard. So we're not going very hard here. This is kind of a steady pace. That's a good rear view shot that Paul got the camera on. Riding around 21 miles an hour. 30, 32, 33 kilometers an hour. 32 is about 20 and a half, 20.5 miles per hour. So at 20 miles per hour, we're not work. We're like warming up, kinda. So if you can't handle this effort, don't so much focus on the speed. I'm just using that as a reference here. 
but focus more on the fact that for me let's say i'm in the bottom of zone two so if you're struggling in your zone two then you need to spend more time working and get a structured program that will give you enough workout at that zone or higher with the right mix so you're not overtraining. So the recipe is more important than telling people oh, I ride 500 miles a week or 150 miles a week. Uh, you know, it's not significant. I do everything by hours. That's what matters. Your body doesn't care about the distance you cover. It cares about how many hours it had to work at a certain effort. I soft pedal here so Lulo can hold his position in the line and then I get behind him as we go through the intersection. This entire stretch the road goes up. Just shake my legs a little bit, keep them loose. This ended up being such a pleasant day. It is 7.31 a.m. and it's at 20 Celsius. 20 Celsius is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. This is August. That's very nice. And this is basically like the temperature on the road, the impact of the wind. The wind's coming from the northwest, which is unusual for August. I switched my light to what they call group mode, I believe. It might be high, because it ended up going off earlier than I had planned. But I just put it on a steady thing because the lightning mode is just so bright. That's Mike. He comes up, he says, hey, my friend, we, we rode together a couple of weeks ago. We went to Richards during the week. And we had a good ride. So we chat. He basically says, good morning. So I leave a gap for him because he had ridden up to catch us. He was not with the group when we met them because he rides from his house. So he's been working to get up here. The good thing was we were not going hard, so he didn't have to tap into the top zones too much. The road goes up here. I'm not doing much high cadence riding right now because really everything feels pretty reasonable for me and so I'm just keeping my tempo the same as if to say I'm not really riding yet so I'm keeping it between 80 to like 95 that's what I'm trying to accomplish when we really start riding then I'll rev it up more that makes it up it's always different you do it based on how you feel and the kind of training you've been doing earlier in the week this is where Lulo had the flat last week and you see he's still in that same spot over that shoulder that's where the rocks gather at the intersection when, they, when the cars come through they push those rocks there see where I am I'm using a clean lane okay he moved over that's good because we have the lane there's no reason to ride in debris there was a cyclist there that's why they were moving over you, you see the little rocks we just went by they always gather at the intersections avoid them where possible or if you must go through them stand up that's where we had stopped to, re to help him with his flat somebody twisted the screw we got up to I see 38 we probably hit 40 kilometers an hour over that little bump so the guys in the back are not necessarily getting uh, an easy ride because by the time we start going fast up here they have to react to it they have to go faster than we were going to get up to speed 
that yo-yo effect they talk about. So Dan pulls off the front. He'd been there for a while. I believe Mark is there now. So this road is up and down, up and down. So you need to pay attention to how your legs feel. You need to save your legs for the hardest part of the ride which is yet to come and since we're doing probably four more hours than these guys will do we watch it even more That really improves the ventilation on that jersey when I pull that down. You see the wind? Look at the bottom of my middle pocket. You can see the wind coming out when it comes in through the front. That's why I keep that down. It keeps you very cool. So these jerseys are very functional. And they look good. What more can you ask for? Paul flips the camera back. I've got to get the name of that gentleman. He took a good pull today when we, when things got really hard. I like people who put their who put their work in when it counts. Mark is done pulling and Mike takes over. Mike's the guy who greeted me a little earlier. He gets to the front. He's taking his cuts. This guy on the left is sitting in the wind a bit much, but I think he's trying to keep from using the brakes. So he comes back over. I make it a point to just stay wherever the draft is, and that's where it is right now. The wind is coming from the north, which has kept the temperatures low. We're still at 20 Celsius. A few weeks ago, the low was 28 Celsius. <laughs> About 80 degrees thereabout. That was the low, now it's 10 degrees cooler. We had a couple of tropical storms in the Gulf, as I mentioned during the route. See, he pulls out here, he's had enough. He does not want to work as hard as he thinks we're going to do on the overpass. I don't know if he stayed with a group, he may have, because they really didn't go that hard on this overpass, but he's going in the back. So he, I guess he doesn't hold anybody up. I'll check for traffic because I plan on using the cleanest part of the pavement here. There's a lot of debris because of the construction on the right. They're getting close to finishing, Look, it's looking good gonna be nice and wide you see where I am I'm using the pavement I rev up in the upper 90s to 100 So that guy makes a move there on the right. Um, there's a lot of debris there, and so I don't know why he did that, but he didn't have a puncture or anything. He's got, it looks like a cross bike or something that he's riding. He's Tim's buddy. He and Tim do that from time to time. They come out on these cross bikes. Tim did it one day, and he was having trouble staying with us, and Mo told him, there's no gravel on this ride. Why are you bringing your gravel bike? <laughs> So we all laughed about it. You're having trouble staying with the group. Don't take your heaviest bike to the ride. You know, you need all the help, all the advantage you can get. So he's at the front and he twisted it for a little while, but it, it he didn't go he didn't pull very long. He 
you can see I'm over to the side because they're soft pedaling here. I'm trying to avoid using my brakes. I look for cars and then I use the lane. There are two lanes here, so I'm going to use the road. So that was a short little move that he made, and it's fine, you know. So, but the, the cool thing is he made the move and now he's, he's at the front contributing to the progress of the group. He didn't just do that to showboat. Get to the front, then pull. Or go off the front. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't care. If you launch an attack, you go for it. So he's there pulling. I take a drink. I always drink every 15 minutes or so in hot weather. At least that. Even if I'm not thirsty, your body needs it. If you've noticed, sometimes after a hard ride, you use the restroom and your pee is like yellow or dark. You know, it's pickled with lactic acid. So you need a drink. That means you're behind. So my goal when I ride, I ride a lot. I drink a lot of water. I don't want to be behind on my hydration. It, it hurts your performance. There's a car coming out. So move a little over towards Paul. You know, I didn't I didn't hit him or anything. I just moved over because Mark slowed down too suddenly. And I did that. I asked him if he was okay and he said yeah. So you always have to be alert in the group. The, uh, the guy who made the move up there on the overpass is up ahead. And Abby starts to go, so I just sit on his wheel. Paul's behind me. That, that area was a little bumpy and there's a slight incline, so I stood for most of it. Take the weight off the bike. I'm keeping my eye around Abby to make sure I can see the imperfections in the pavement. The guy in front in the blue shirt on the right is the one that ends up bumping me at one of the intersections. Uh, the pace was just a bit much for him, I believe. But he, his bike, uh, he's all over his bike. I motion to Paul that they're going again. You can see there are guys ahead of us on the descent. So we go ahead and roll. In a little bit, I'm just going to get into a tuck to avoid pedaling. And just roll towards the... That's how we get back, save some energy, enjoy the nice descent. The road starts to go up here. I rev up my cadence. It's the guy on the right that made the move on the overpass. We roll back. I'm on the left. Mike is in front of this gentleman here in front of Paul. I'm a little to the left of Paul. So what I observed, this was almost like a road race in a manner. There were a lot of accelerations, but nobody was sustaining the effort. It, there was a lot of yo-yo, go really hard, slow down, you know. And so we turn on this corner coming up onto Raven Chapel Road going north. And there's, there's some bumps, you know, nice little climbs coming up. People are going to get excited. So this is why we start to play. Uh, somewhere here, I find out that my brakes have been rubbing the whole time, and I let Paul know. And the way I found out is I just happened to look down and I noticed that I could see this spacing. That's Abby. That's the guy who made the move on the overpass on the left there and so uh, I, I had noticed that there was a space between my brake pads and the wheel on one side but not the other and then I looked 
over and notice that oh yeah it is rubbing so all I did was carefully reach down and pull the brake over your brake should be set to where you can adjust it by hand just make sure you don't get your hand in the wheel if you're not comfortable doing something like that stop and then do it there's nothing funny about getting your hands caught in the wheel while it's moving you hurt yourself there I'm adjusting it right there I saw it and I move over and grab them pulled it over yeah, I did it a couple of times I go again that's where I fix it and then I tell Paul this thing been rubbing the whole time you can see the gavel from those guys because I'm adjusting my brakes I thought I said okay now we can ride <laughs> and immediately the bike felt better <laughs> <laughs> so I must have bumped the brakes at some point um, probably when I was swapping out wheels getting it ready for the weekend that happens usually I check it and so I just must have overlooked that They had picked up the pace for a bit, and then once we rode up to them, it settled in. I was telling him, I said, that's why I felt like I was working too hard. Especially during our warm-up. Everything felt harder than it should have felt. I thought I, I had not recovered from the week's effort, the week's activities, and not just cycling related, just everything else that goes on. So somewhere at the intersection that's coming up, this is where this guy will bump me as he goes through the intersection for no reason because I'm in front. He comes from behind and bumps into me so I don't know what he was doing because I was holding my line. There he is. There he is. The guy in the blue right there. That's where he bumped me. <laughs> So I told him, he apologized, I told him, I said, well, be careful, that's no problem, because chances are you going to be going there, because I know how to bump, we used to fight for those kind of positions in the sprint. But the pace is a bit hard, hard, hard for him here, I believe, because, uh, he seems to be working really hard and you'll see in a few kilometers when the pace picks up again he gets gapped i don't know if he's on camera he's actually behind paul so i see that you don't which is fine i mean he's trying you know he's not used to the effort but he could use a fit he's all over his bike A high percentage of cyclists have never had a professional fit. They think you just buy a bike and jump on it. Right here, the effort picks up, and we just ride faster because now somebody twisted the screw. That's why I mean when I say the back is hard. The ride back there, you got to be strong because you got to ride up to people like we're doing here. So we're actually working harder than they are. We go by all these guys to get up here, and then we get up here and we realize they're slowing down now. So they hammered the hill, and now they're sitting up. So I just I just sit behind them and soft pedal. So try not to stay in the back. You have to work hard if you want to stay with the leader. So if you're in good enough condition, stay in the front. I don't mind staying in the back with these guys because I want to work harder before Paul and I break off to do our the rest of our ride. Plus, we get a good view for the clips. So they, they hammered the second hill here. And being right here, I don't have to work as hard. I'm just riding. 
Mike goes and he sits up again. So that's the yo-yo thing I was talking about. Which you get in road races. So Dan comes. He's on the left there with his Chateau's outfit. Mike takes off again. Uh, there's another guy in front of Mike pulling. Paul Ilonga is right here behind Abby. I'm on the right there as I come through the picture. We're going to be turning right up there. I'm on the inside. Paul's on the outside. Pace picks up here right after we turn. Because there's somebody up there a little off the front. Mike is behind him. I forgot the guy's name. But uh, I never, I haven't gotten his name. He's been with us a few times. So at this point, I'm just sitting there and watching to see what they're doing. Paul's behind me right now. He's starting to go down South Pine Boulevard here. The speeds are already high. They're descending. And once it starts to slow down, somebody turns the screw. You hear the wind? The wind's coming from the north because of the storms in the Gulf I talked about. We're going into the wind in this curve. The pace has picked up. We're doing about 26 miles an hour. Paulie Lunga is in front of me. I'm behind him. Abby's on the right of Paul. And now we're flying. 26, 27, almost 28 miles an hour. They go around this curve. I'm behind Paul Ilonga. I decide, okay, they've done three major efforts after those two climbs. So now's the time to not let them rest. Because right here, you can see they let up. And Mike has been working hard to close that gap. He closes it. And I go ahead and use the opposite side of the road and open up the gap. Right there. Boom, I'm gone. I hit about almost 30 miles an hour. Kick it up. I look under my arm to see who's coming. And then I see that the gap is huge. So I start backing off right here. I'm getting ready for the corner that's coming. You will hear Paul Longa tell Mike, you got it. He said, all yours, Mike, as if to say, you pull him back, go get him. Mike wants nothing to do with that. Mike pulls off because he had worked hard earlier. Right here, he pulls off to the left. And you will see the rest of the guys now, they want to sit on Paul. At this point, I'm backing off. I'm really waiting because I see Paul right there. That's the shadow. I can see that Paul is trying to get to me. That's all I see. So I back off. I said, once he gets to me, we can resume. So I'm over on the right. He knows. He doesn't want to pull them over. Watch what he does. He goes all the way across the road. Then they say, what are you doing? He said, you got to work. <laughs> but nobody wants to come through. So Paul comes and he passes me. And as soon as he passes me, I pass him back. Because I don't want him working right now. I'm gonna come back and give him a wheel because nobody else wants to come to the front. So right there, I come in front of him and I give him a wheel. And then Dan is there, so Dan goes by me and I get on Dan's wheel. I don't know what they're talking about back there, but somebody says they didn't like what Paul did. Because Paul did not pull them back to me. Paul wanted somebody else to come through and do some work. Quite a few guys in the bunch don't want to put their nose in the wind. Dan's not one of them. Dan's working, so I decide, okay, let's work together. So Dan and I are working up there. I'll go ahead and take the lead again because he was slowing down. So I get to the front. Dan's trying to get back in the drive. Now watch. Instead of Abby pulling through, he's going to let Dan in. So somehow Dan ends up in, in position three instead of position four. So he doesn't get that much of a break. And this hurts our momentum here because you were seeing a little bit, the 
nobody wants to ride. It's just too hard. But we're going up this climb, it's gonna twist to the right. I'm still pulling, I'm keeping the pressure on. I'm keeping the effort a little below where, 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 where it was when I went. The speeds are different because we're climbing. But the pressure's on. So I'll pull off there. That guy takes the lead. Somehow Dan ends up in third position again. So I get behind Dan. You gotta catch the gaps. That little lull allowed Bob to get behind me. He's in front of Paul here. But you will see, the pressure is still on. And because the pressure is on, Bob has trouble staying on our wheel. Um, Bob has gotten in better condition than in the past, but he's still got a lot to work on, meaning, first of all, his fit. He's all over that saddle. That's how you get saddle sores and chafing. See, we pull away. We're not really trying to pull away, but he just can't close that little gap. But, and then they've had enough. Nobody wants to pull through. You see everybody spread across the road? Nobody wants to get to the front. So I go ahead and ride to the front, and as I go by, I tell Dan, come on, Dan. But Dan doesn't want to bother because these guys are not working well together. So I end up off the front without really trying. The effort is the same. If you look at my heart rate, it's been at 165, 163. Effort is the same. It's just not that. I keep looking back. I'm like, come on, let's ride. With this accelerate and sit up stuff. Let's do this. And so the second time I look back, then they, they ride up to me. Because I'm looking back like, come on. I didn't want to ride away from the camera. So now, so Dan rides up to me again. And I think Lulu is behind Paul. Lulu's going to come around. I'm on Dan's wheel right there. The road's going up again. I think this is the last climb before the area where everybody likes to sprint. Nobody wanted to sit up there because it's hard. This is Lulo. Lulo gets into the picture here. That's Bob running his mouth. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not paying attention to that. I'm just riding. So Dan goes. Abby goes. Lulo goes. I just rev up the pace a little bit. Highway 2854 is right up there. So they're going because they expect to stop on that corner. I don't do these corner stops. You want to stop, you stop at a store or a cafe or whatever. Because the people who were making moves back there earlier, like on the overpass and all of that, they've been dropped. I'm not waiting for them. You make a move, you get dropped, I'm not waiting for you. You will catch us at the store. So I just keep it going here. Paul hung back because he wanted to film what was happening back here, but then he realized he knows I'm not going to stop. So he's a little further behind than I'd like for him to be. I look, it's clear when he sees me laying the bike, he knows it's clear. I don't have to say clear because nobody's there. They had backed off. That little move I made, I wasn't going that hard. I opened the gap. So right here, I'm waiting for Paul. I saw pedal like this. As soon as I see that he's on my wheel, we start to ride. So once Paul gets on my wheel, I, I say, I hope you told him goodbye. <laughs> You can see, they're standing at that corner there waiting for the people that were making moves earlier in the ride. They didn't like the move that Paul made where he went across the road so they could pull through. To move over, I did the same thing so they don't have to follow me. They had to work. Nobody wants to work when it's time to work. And then what happens is sometimes when you pull them over, as soon as you do all the work, then they'll come around and increase the pace. And if you don't have anything left, they'll, they'll leave you behind. So never pull more than be beyond what you're capable of. Always save a little something so you can stay with the group. I did, all right. We didn't see them again. You know me. That's it. 
so right here we basically uh switched to we took a we took a quiet route and uh we're oh, near the back side of the lake feeder or something like that could be a camera and, you know uh people that feed birds sometimes they will put stuff in there that will release the food when the bird's nearby it's some kind of motion sensor that red light i was asking about light, a motion no center sensor on a bird on the motion sensor so it's a motion sensor or something let's yeah. go straight so my, the map was right it just goes through private neighborhoods we, we took a route that I had looked up. It's yeah. right behind Taco Corner. We didn't stop at Taco Corner. We went on a road called so Peel Road, Walden Road. Yeah, okay. At yeah, there's a know. lot of nice communities. This is behind the yeah. lake. It's about maybe two kilometers from Taco Corner. So instead of going on the main yeah. highway, we took, we took the back way. Look at these roads. Beautiful. We'd never been back here before. I looked it up on the map. So instead of going up across 105 Lone Star Park where we took a different way to go into the forest. And so right now we're just checking out this neighborhood here. Wow. And there's a beautiful road behind this gate. The gate's not open. We've been going through gated communities on this escapade. But I'm showing him the road. So he's going to put the camera through the gate to film the road. Yeah, man. It goes up. It's a nice curve. Then it swings to the left. It would be nice to check that out. That's probably a 3% climb. Because the camera doesn't do it this justice. Is beautiful, man. And so he's just trying to film that. So we had gone through several gated communities to get to this one, but the gate, there was no car coming out or something for us to get in there to check it out. So maybe next time, there's a lady in the house on a ride on greeting. I told her we're enjoying your pretty area. And look at this climb. It's about yeah. three and a half, four percent, I think. It says it's three. It's just beautiful. Four. Five. So it's, it's yeah. more than yeah, it's more than five percent, because this thing picks up integers on the overlay. It looks like it got to six. Yes. Yeah. So it was six percent, six point <laughs> seven, almost seven percent. It's a nice little bump. Yeah. So you find something like this in yep. your area, you want to work on your climbing, you can come and do repeats. It'll make you strong. The road was recently paved. It was not this nice a month ago because I had seen it from 1097. Pill Road. Peel Road is just a way into this community, but it's quiet, scenic. So it's 25 Celsius. The day was just beautiful. Oh yeah. That's 70 some, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at that. That's, that's the tail gorgeous. end of the lake. This is the southernmost tip, south, lake. southwestern tip of the lake, Conroe. Um, yeah. And this is just up and down this little peel road. We hit another four percenter. I think it's probably another five percent before we get off of it. <laughs> but we're not really hammering it, we're just riding it. And if you do this on climbing, you just ride them in a reasonable gear, yeah. you still do some work. I feel it in the legs. I was telling you, it's almost 5%. Beautiful workout, man. Or four and a half you percent. You do the repeats over here, man. <laughs> you hear, you hear Paul? Yep. You come and do repeats, that would make you strong. We don't always have to go that way to get yeah. out here. We can go 1097, get on peel and come down. A beautiful community right behind Taco Corner. Yeah. And uh, it's a good excursion today. This will take us to 1097. We sh on this day took us through the forest. When he came and hit me on the back of the head, how's my buddy doing? He thinks he's tight. I'm 
With less than a month. This is beautiful. But I used to see this road. It's not like this. Back of the right there. I'm explaining to Paul where we are in relation to where Taco Corner is so he can get his bearings so we took a different route and we're just we're less than two kilometers away from Taco Corner it's to our left we're gonna go I just right love the area. so it was a good excursion he enjoyed finding out those new roads which is not too far from where we frequent this is 1097 the FM 1097 the eastern tip of it and this will take us into the forest on Mount Pleasant Road. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I know we always come the opposite. Oh, we're talking about the last time we came on this road. This is where Jerry Lutner greeted us on the camera. We don't need to stop either. We need to stop at Taco Corner to get cut to them. When we did the RDBC Grand Fondo, we came on this road as well. There is a bigger expanse of Lake Conroe coming up there versus what we just saw near those homes. But it's all the same lake. It's the southern tip of the lake. It's just different to get here, man. <laughs> Let's try it. Ah! Let's save our feelings. Okay, boys. Here we are. So that's the lake. That's the, a bigger piece of it. We're just in the neighborhood to the right. And now we're a little west of that neighborhood. And we're crossing the same lake here, the southwestern tip of it. So to the right, that's what we were of Appeal Road. That's where those gated communities are. So those homes have private docks with access to the water. where we decide okay. to go to Richards. Right there. So we had originally planned to do six hours ago. Okay. Right there we decided let's just go to Richards. A beautiful nice day, why not? Temperature is a mile. 24 C right now. It's actually cooled down. That's 75 degrees Fahrenheit. In August at uh, 8.30 in the morning, in this part of the country, no. Humidity was low, temperature was low, it was beautiful. And it stayed overcast most of the day. Just kind of a hazy day. the entrance up there in that curve for the forest.
Legends will just roll out of Rachel's, Texas. Fall is in the air. This is just lovely. I mean, we're barely at 24 Celsius. It's my buddy back there. Look at, look at it. We just missed the leaves falling. We just started the camera on. Put it on follow mode. It feels like 24 Celsius, but we're actually at 28 now so it's warmed up yes nice we're outside of richard we're on 1486 headed south we encounter some very nice climbs up to eight percent on this journey south so paul said we need to frequent this part of 1486 yeah. Since this is right after the stop, I go ahead and stand to kind of get my body warmed up a little bit on this climb. It's a chip seal highway, but uh, I was riding my Vittoria, and those tires are just supple. So I actually enjoyed this road as much as you can enjoy chip seal. So your, your tire quality and your tire pressure makes a big difference. It's a long climb. I mean, there are a lot of good climbs out there, so that's why we like to go north. The short, the punchy, but you get a good workout. You don't need to kill yourself, just kind of ride it. You know, we're really just kind of warming up after the stop at the store. We reloaded our bottles. We got enough to where we won't have to stop until we get into town. We're in between Riches, Richards and a town called Degas. It stayed overcast for most of the day. Very pleasant. 27 now, 27 degrees Celsius. It's about right about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Paul's talking about my coordination where I got the orange on the jersey, the helmet, the arm, the leg of the pants, and then of course the bike. This is another heavily cycled route in both directions. Even though it's sparsely populated and that's why cyclists come out here. So the, the speeds are higher but you get a few vehicles passing you on your journey. I try my best to stay close to where those, uh, you can see the, where the imprint of the car tires are left. I'm staying to the right because the wind is coming from, a, from the right, which is west. We're headed south. And so I stay close to the white line so Paul can stay on my left and get the benefit of the draft. 
The wind's picking up, so I kind of close up my position a little bit. At this point in the ride, I guess I had to charge the light because I, you know, I used the bike uh, the last few weeks, and uh, the light just it ran out of power. So I'm trying to turn it on. Yeah. Okay, so it's blinking. So when the battery power gets low, it doesn't like to run in steady mode. The blinking mode is kind of like a limp home mode because it uses very little power. So I turned it up. It ended up going off after a while. So it's blinking now. When it's blinking, the camera does not do it justice. When it's steady, it can really represent it. But that light is very, very effective. That's the DICE TL50. And I set it up to where I can reach the power switch easily while I'm riding, as you see there. So everything you do on your bike needs to take into account how you plan to use it. Even if you come through here solo, you, the ride is still enjoyable. I mean, it's more enjoyable with a group or with your mate, you know, than by yourself. But this terrain, you're working the whole time. So you're not bored. You've got to work on this chip seal. There's no free rolling here. This is not a, a smooth asphalt system, you know, pavement to where you just get, you can keep rolling. If you stop pedaling for any appreciable amount of time, you start to slow down. And if your tires are too high as far as the pressure, you feel every ripple. So I really enjoyed the road because uh, I put 90 in the front, 95 in the back. That's what I ride on all my tires. In fact, I'm going to start using tubulars on a couple of wheels that I have and I will be running the same pressures. Because tubulars can go even higher, 140, 150, but those are crazy pressures. Unless you're running on a track or a very smooth surface, don't do that on the road because you will feel everything. You will bounce around. It's inefficient. You can hear the wind. As we go faster, it picks up. We got the, the trees on our right, so our speed's increased. Effort is about the same. I'm in zone one, and we're moving. So as you train more and more, you will be able to put out more power in each zone. Every time you see me hesitate, like when we went over the bridge, I'm putting weight on the pedals and I'm on weight in the saddle without getting up. This is why we use the gimbal in free form so we can get the views, unobstructed side views, and you saw the views at the lake and all of that. So to, to make you all feel that you're with us on this journey. So it really immerses the audience in the ride than just having one view. The one view makes you feel like you're just a spectator. With all these varying views, it's like you're there with us. It's a slight grade here, it doesn't register, it's a little less than 1%. There are very few flat areas here. This is pretty much up and down, falls flat. So you're working the entire way. You get a good workout going out the ridges and coming back in any direction, whether you do 149 or 1486. I like coming back on this road because, as you can see, we've probably been passed by maybe one or two cars this entire stretch. The 
Look how that road leans and curves. Just pretty. This beats riding in the city because uh, you can maintain your effort without interruptions. You can see the road starting to go up here. A little more gradual than some of the ones we'll come across. It's probably around 2%. It flashed 1% for a bit, but I think it's like 2%. So you have to get in a rhythm up here because a lot of the climbs, even though they're not super steep, they're not very short. They continue, so you've got to get a rhythm. Otherwise, your legs will scream. you got to get in the proper gear. You can see how overcast it is. That was the entire day. I mean, we got back around 1 p.m. or so, and even then, it was overcast. It was a very comfortable Saturday. And all of that added to the enjoyment of the ride because we we're not sticky, you know, low humidity, nice wind to keep you cool. This is farm country out here. A lot of people raise cattle. So there's not a whole, there's no industry out here per se. You got a few stores when you get near the town. That's about it. I basically stay in the same gear in this stretch and I just pedal faster when the terrain allows as you see right now. My cadence is up about 20, 25 RPMs. Look at, yeah, I think this is the climb that gets to 8%. You see it rob our speed as we hit it. It's a climb that you want to take in a small ratio. So I basically end up going to the small chain ring. Right there, I'm on the small chain ring. You see my cadence went up just a little. But I searched for the gear in the back that will keep my cadence in the same range. Because now once you're on the small chain ring, you can decide if you go smaller or bigger. But get, on, get that change done before you hit the climb like you saw me do. You see our speeds have dropped. Look at that, it's, it's almost 6% there, and it says 4, but it's going to go higher because it gets to like 8 point something percent, and it's a good length. See, it's back to 5, if you look at the gradient above the cyclist in the overlay. I don't know if it registered that, but on my computer it said 8%, we got up to 8%, this is steep here, and it's still going. I'm probably in a 39.19, I mean 36.19 or something like that. <laughs> I was talking to Paul there. <laughs> we had come through here uh, about two weeks ago, we came through and another rider I was with waited late to shift and all you heard was the, the chain making noises because it was under load. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all you heard. That was a nice climb. We just rode it. We didn't, we didn't attack it. We just rode it. It goes down here again. You can see there's another climb in the distance. Look at this area. Beautiful. 
That's why it feels cooler out here because of all these trees. Because in the city, they've cut all the trees down and pave everything. So it's warmer. This is another client we hit. I just find a gear that my legs like. When there's a doubt, start with something lower than what you think you need because it's actually easier to shift up as far as maintaining your rhythm. Because the shoulder is very narrow and there, there's very little traffic out here, you can see where I'm riding. And plus that shoulder is much rougher than where I am. The cars don't ride there. The cars at least smooth the lane a little bit. That's why I'm placed where I am. Even if I were riding solo, that's where I would ride. So that the other traffic knows that, hey, I'm using the road. If that shoulder were nice and smooth, yeah, I'd probably ride there, but there's no reason to do that on a road like this with such light traffic. And you see the gravel at that intersection, I believe that's gravel, I think maybe a different, yeah, there's always gravel that gathers there, a little dirt, sand, or whatever. I don't like to ride through that, because there's other stuff in there besides that that can cause a puncture. So on a road like this, I would probably be a little more to the left using that smooth area that the right tire of the cars ride in. And then as, if I hear cars coming up behind me, I may drift a little to the right and once they go by, go back to that spot. Because that spot is the smoothest spot to ride on the chip seal road. But I'm where I am because I want Paul to ride in that spot I'm talking about. That's where he is. I think I call him up to the front. Yeah. I, I, I told him, I said, here's a beautiful downhill for you. <laughs> so now I go ahead and, and place myself on the spot I was talking about. Beautiful road. The road's beautiful, but the surface is, leaves a lot to be desired, especially if you over inflate your tires. You feel everything. Chip seal is not a whole lot of fun. And if you're tired, it's even worse. Because you work for your, your speed. I just like how quiet it is out here. Every day of the week. Quiet. I'm a little to the left of Paul as I film. I just told him cars back so he'd be aware of it and not come off the front on the left or anything. There's a rider, the lady going the other way. We came across a few of them. Quite a bit off camera, we're headed into Richard. Yep. There were just a they plethora of cyclists. Serious. I don't want to stop. I'm gonna turn it off here, buddy. I'm gonna turn it off after that hill. I was telling him that maybe we should stop filming after the climb, but then we decided we'll to change our mind to. Yeah, when we get the Dakas. Dakas yeah, you go far. ride into the Dakas. I figure I said that's what we'll. We're heading Montgomery. Back in Montgomery. We're back in Montgomery County. We just passed. We, I think the sign's coming up, or we passed it. No, it's on the right. That green sign. We're back in Montgomery County, which lets us know that we've left Grimes County. Richards is in Grimes County. And we decide to continue into Dacus. No stops. Oh, 
Paul had said that there's a lot of riders coming out here. And that's why I was telling him, I said, yeah, because of the high exercise potential. There is a book that is selling bike shops that's written by a couple of authors that focus on cycling the Houston area. And that's the phrase they use throughout describing the exercise potential of each part of town and each map you come across and they grade them once you ten. Down and so the highest exercise potential roads were out here in Navasota. You know the rural roads. So I hand him the camera and come back to the front. The wind's picking up quite a bit because and our speeds are increasing because the road has leveled off a little bit up here. We're still at a pretty high elevation, 102 meters, versus the city. About 300 and some feet above sea level. I look down there, what I'm looking at is I'm looking for Paul's wheel. I always look to see which side of my wheel he's on. And then I decide where my placement and my movements will be. I do that all the time, not just for Paul. Anytime I'm in the group or wherever, I always like to know where the riders are that are in close proximity to me. So it's a constant thing because in the group, things evolve. Nothing is stationary. I get into a rhythm here and try to relax as my speed increases. I'm right at the top of zone two right now. And that's where we keep it on most of our rides. This is the effort we go. We, we go harder on certain spots like the climbs or whatever. But this is our main effort level. This and then maybe sweet spot, depending on what we, we're doing. The wind picks up, so I get in the drops for a little bit to change the position of my arms. Oh, we're doing about 22, 23 miles per hour. It's a relatively flat stretch here. But with the chip seal, we're working hard. I go ahead and run the credits, get that out of the way. We want to thank our sponsors, Divine Mercy AG Church, Kish Fabrication, and of course, Paul Ilonga, Joe Nanga, and Reed Syth of the United States for supporting the channel. All our channel members and our patrons who appreciate your support. We could not keep this going without your help. So thank you for your generosity. Consider becoming a supporter of the channel. Go to Patreon or sign up on YouTube in our channel membership. YouTube.com slash VeloHarmony slash join forward slash join. That's one way or look in the description of the videos. And support the channel you like. So your insurer is out here and available for you and all the other cyclists that can benefit from the information we provide. Look at that road, is that pretty or what? Decent form, beautiful day, a nice quiet road. What more can you ask for? We're going about what, 27, let's see, 27 to 29 miles an hour. Now we back off to 25, the road is going up, the speed drops, I keep the effort the same. You can see, I'm not, I don't see hard air when I'm riding, I don't pay attention to that, it's just feel. But you can see, the effort stayed about the same. You gotta be able to dose your effort that way, by feel. The wind is blowing from the west on our right. And we just, we found the rhythm here and we kept it nice and tight as we approach Dickens, Texas. Listen to that wind. The wind's gonna always be out there. Don't worry about it, enjoy. I love the wind. On a warm day, it cools you down. It also strengthens you when it blows you around. It makes you work hard. So the wind is your friend. We're in Decas. That's Decas, Texas. You blink, you miss it. 
There's the store that all the cyclists stop at. On the left where you see those cars parked. We'll go past the store. I'm careful here because this is a, a, a decreasing radius turn and it's kind of slick. So we roll through carrying all that speed. And that's it. This is what we did on Saturday. I hope you got a chance to get out there and get some K's in. If you didn't, get up, get your body moving, move around. Keep those doctors fire!